morning and welcome to this week's edition of Tourismus Namibia. Once again, we always bring you topics, destinations, and then at the end to the point. My name is Frank Steffen, as you can see on the screen in front of you. Um, I'm the editor of Allgemeine Zeitung, but also responsible for Tourismus Namibia. And uh, as always, we hope to bring you a bit of good news. I think we've got very exciting issues that we want to discuss today, and we bring you a number of good new destinations, some that we experienced ourselves. But let's have a look just now. Let's first have a look at the marketplace. Yeah, welcome back. And uh, first and foremost, uh, we would be amiss if we didn't uh, take it on as the first item today, Nekatel Dam. Uh, all of you will remember last year we were so excited when we suddenly saw how quickly the dam had filled. I had the privilege of speaking to a couple of consulting engineers way back when they started putting up the dam. And it was nice to see when they reckoned, uh, worst case scenario, it will take 10 years to fill. Best case scenario was three years, but I doubt that they ever thought it would only take a year to actually fill up. And as you can see, this was uh, magic footing that uh, Monique Adams from down in Kietman sent us. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Nilo Kawari. I'm an engineer from the Ministry of Agriculture, the Directorate of Water Supply and Sanitation Coordination. We are at the Negarthar Dam, that is uh, currently overflowing. Uh, the percentage for today is at around 103%. Uh, so the dam started overflowing from yesterday, from around 11.30, that's when it started spilling over. Yeah, so currently the dam is uh, still uh, under the ownership of the Ministry of Agriculture. So the plants are underway to hand it over to Name Water. Uh, but then the operation and maintenance is uh, already been carried out by both Name Water and the Ministry. Yes, so obviously we're all waiting now for all these projects that have been promised for years now. Hopefully they'll get uh, jump started in the next year or two because clearly that amount of water needs some um, utilization. Um, there was always talk of starting irrigation projects. Uh, the, la the last time we reported, and this is like almost two years ago, um, the Minister of Agriculture at the time said that the best way to use it is to possibly have a hybrid system where some of uh, commercial farmers are using the water and then obviously the idea was to involve the community. So let's hope that uh, this becomes a reality sooner than later because there's a lot of infrastructure that first needs to be put in place. Right, and then while we're on it, I mean, there's water everywhere in South Africa too. So the Orange River is coming down with a big bang. And if we look at, the, at these photos, uh, these were of Petrus Capitango. He's the manager of uh, Felix United, Nortuva. And clearly, they've already taken uh, damage. They're not the first ones uh, to tell us about this. Um, so this is serious stuff. I mean, this is the Orange River going far beyond normal limits. And uh, uh, obviously, people have been warned. But uh, I think it's just important to just reiterate uh, the whole thing that water levels are rising far beyond what is normal and there's still big water on its way. These photos were done before the big water actually arrived. And we've got a little video that we want to show you just now. Um, that's from a, from a person who sent it to the Republic Kane and it's an Afrikaans footage, but you'll see that he actually shows how close to the road it is already. Okay. What is it? I think it's 500 mal a half meter. A half meter, that's a bit here, but. Yeah, I think the bottom line is that while all water in a dry country such as Namibia is welcome, I think we should all be aware of the fact that 
Uh, this is not the go a good time to, to just uh, to go for a happy-go-lucky drive. Rather phone whoever needs phoning. Uh, make sure if you contact people at Nordova, otherwise at Außenkehr, or for that matter down in Oranjemund, find out what the roads are like. Are they passable? Are they safe? Um, there's no point in getting drowned just because you wanted to get to a certain place in a certain time. So, um, yes, Orange River, very strong. By the way, what you see in the back here is, uh, is not a screensaver which we've saved for you. The, the, this is actual footage uh, that, that I took up at the Okavango, and uh, that's coming down quite uh, in a much better fashion now than before. It used to be much, much lower, even uh, as recent as November last year. On the other side, that's Angola. So th these are live uh, images that I took up there. Um, just our third uh, item that we've got is bird flu. And uh, we, we wrote about it in the Allgemeine Zeitung, and I'm actually quite sure that I saw it in the other papers as well. Uh, there was a sus suspicion that the H5N1 outbreak uh, that uh, was uh, evident down in the, uh, um, at the western coast of, of South Africa, um, that it could quite easily have reached our birds as well because they suddenly seemed so lazy and, and despondent. And uh, now it turns out uh, there is actually an alert level. It's been confirmed. Um, so no collection and transport of guano is allowed. And uh, so this is quite a serious influenza for these birds. And uh, we just need to, to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand, I suppose. So the, um, that's quite serious. So if you see these birds, just leave them alone. I mean, I suppose if we're sick, we don't want to be rushed about either. So these are our topics for today. Up next, we've got destination. <laughs> Yeah, I should have said destinations because we always try and at least bring you two. Um, so this week we introduce you to Kupferkelle Resort. Now Kupferkelle here you can see that's the main road as you come from Otavi into Tsumup on the main road. Um, as you enter the, the, the town it's quite a longish road in. Those of you who know will know what I'm talking of. But long before properly entering the town, you've got to turn, uh, actually it's a robot, and uh, you've got Megabuild on the left-hand side there, and as you turn right, you've got Kupfer Quelle Resort. You can't miss it. There's a big board telling you. And if you look at that photo, you will see there's a tiny pool in there. Let me assure you it's not a tiny pool. It's Olympic size, and uh, it's, it's really, I think Kupfer Quelle Resort must easily be one, if not the best resorts that we actually have in the country. It's just crazy what they've done with that place. So the, the German name Kupferquelle is originally, uh, obviously refers to, to the, directly uh, translated would be copper fountain, but it relates to the huge and rich copper deposits that you find in Sumit. And um, even the uh, Heikom Bushman, uh, who, who, who are from that area, knew of those rich deposits already. And um, they gave the area the name Tsom uh, which means as much to dig a hole in, into the ground, um, which refers to the mining, obviously. And uh, the Kupferkelle Resort has uh, become a unique family resort. Be uh, it belongs to the Henning fam family. They're quite active up there in the north. And it was developed into a tourist site uh, um, with huge highlights and great emphasis on detail and passion for the possibilities of Namibian tourism. Now, these photos are mine, by the way. Um, we were there last weekend uh, on, a, on, a, on a management uh, weekend from Namibia Media Holdings. And I'll tell you, this is quite something. I mean, you see these birds actually going for a swim there while we were preparing for our lunch. And um, 
it, that, that resort is simply marvelous. There's no other way. Those of you who've been to Wilderness, I actually said to some of my colleagues, when you go up and into the mountain and so on, you, you sometimes you, you feel reminded of, of, uh, um, of that part of, of, of the uh, garden route down in South Africa. So very wilderness-like. Um, the bungalows are something, uh, something you, that you're not used to. And even the camping is quite luxurious, I would say, close to glamping, I suppose. This is the bungalow which I had. It was further up, and I felt as if I'm uh, visiting a palace. Uh, um, on the, to the right-hand side, you would now have your, your, your sleeping uh, quarters. And then on the left, there was a, um, a proper sitting room with entertainment area. This was the site out there. It, uh, we, we came to Tsumab when it was raining, really very nice. This is the sleeping room, um, obviously a very nice shower and, and normal facilities, but uh, very well done and, and, and nicely furnished, I must say, in good taste and uh, really something to, to experience. Uh, I remember that our IT guy uh, from NMIH said to me, I mean, he says, they can invite me here anytime again. And, um, so he, he really enjoyed that stay, uh, like we all did. And as you can see, there's proper lighting, and it's uh, as you go to to the one side, you will uh, see there's a little stoopy, or so um, you can either go and have a seat there and enjoy that, or, or you can uh, actually go further and uh, go next door, where there is a, a proper um, a uh, sitting room you will see just now uh, there's a there's a place where you can eat i mean as you can do here so there is not even a need to take the full quarter but i think they tried to impress us um, because we were obviously quite a, a big group so they had to, uh, took out all registers and, and and made sure that we've got a very enjoyable stay um, but you could see it's, it's how they work. Um, Kupfer Kuala has uh, some very good staff and they're able to quickly uh, um, take care of your needs. And that's a big thing. So this is quite a longish video, um, but uh, it's long because I tell you I was so impressed. Um, this is where I uh, got out then, out of the sleeping quarter, going just that little passage over into this uh, uh, sitting room or whatever, entertainment area, whatever you want to call it. I actually opened those windows so that there's some light and you can see how nicely and well done it is. Um, I obviously didn't use half of it um, because we were there on a management meeting, so most of the time you work. But I mean, this is just perfect for any family. Um, you, you, I'm, I'm quite sure if you spoke to them, they would be able to combine it. Because I saw that this, this uh, very dining room that they've got, uh, or, or entertainment area, whatever you want to call it, you will see there's another door there. You see it on that side. That, so that actually ties back into the next door room as well. So if you're a family, you can basically take the whole unit. You have the kids on the one side and the, the adults on the other. This is another stoopy in front uh, of, of, of that entertainment area. Again, very nicely done, and it's, uh, as you can see there, it's got a braai area. Um, you can sit there perfectly, have a drink, and have a little braai, so it's, it's nice for self-catering. Or otherwise, you go down to the restaurant. Um, that, that restaurant is very nice as well. As you could see from the uh, photos that we showed you earlier, um, it's, it's really a nice area. And um, yeah, I would go back to Kupfer Kewele any day, and, and I don't speak for myself only, all of us. There wasn't a single colleague who had a bad word to say. We were also totally impressed. This is Johanan uh, Kutsia. He was one of my colleagues. And look at these vast uh, lawns and, and the big pool there. I mean, you can basically settle down there and, and train for the next Olympics, I suppose. And there in the far background, you can see the restaurant and all those places. So really a properly established resort. A very nice halfway uh, uh, house if you, if you go to, up to Etosha and you've come a long way from South Africa, this would be perfect. And by the way, if you've got a caravan, they've got camping facilities and so they, they're just as, as nice to, 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 uh, to make use of. So really a one-stop shop because they've got a pharmacy next door, they've got a little 
uh, little uh, supermarket there. Um, and anyway, Tsumup is Tsumup. It takes you no more than two minutes to go into center of town. Obviously, if you walk, you would use a bit longer, but um, seeing that you've driven there, I suppose you've got a car to quickly go down there. So um, Tsumup itself is obviously a very nice town to go and visit. We've had it as uh, one of our themes previously on the show. So anyway, remember, Kupfer Quelle. Um, just remember that name and you'll be well sorted. Then up next, uh, my uh, colleagues sent us something about Casa Forno and uh, Sestibon. Now, um, why we combined them is because the owners are the same. So we originally started out with Sestibon, uh, but over time they added Casa Forno, which is just across the street, basically. And it doesn't really matter. You can see there in the background, that's the road. Um, if you take on the right-hand side, that yellow stripe going up is the road leading uh, through Ochivarongo uh, as you come from uh, Okahancha and go for, uh, forward to, to Otavi. And then you see the turn-off to the left there. That's in the center of the town. That's where you've got the turn-off to Uchu. So that road leads out to Uchu, or if you also want to, you can go take that road to Maruru. So it's very central. Um, Simply central, not only in terms of the town, but central in terms of, once again, if you want to go up to Itosha, or if you, uh, whether you go via Uchu or whether you go via Tsumup, this is quite a nice place to visit. Uh, you obviously in that town, remember recently we spoke about the crocodile farm and all of that. So yes, these places are quite magic. Um, Casafono Country Hotel is what they call the, the, the one on the right-hand side then. And it's a, what they say, a beautiful upmarket bed and breakfast situated in Ochimarongo, as we showed you. And it is the traveler's home away from home. And it really is like that uh, because you've got nice food there. I've, I've spent time there. so And uh, they reckon it's the doorstep to Namibia's north. And it was obviously con converted from three residential houses and includes an atmospheric a la carte family restaurant, fully licensed pub and a cocktail bar. And it's got the conference facilities, as does Sessibong, because Sessibong is, is an African-style hotel accommodation. You can see thatched roof and everything. And, um, well, most people in Ochimarongo love hanging out there. This is just one of those uh, uh, thingies, uh, the aquarium that, that creates some atmosphere as you in there. As I said, thatched roof, and within the thatched roof, they've got a double story. So you know, up on top, you can even go and play pool. You've got the, uh, the, the, the actual pool outside, as you can see here. This is the view towards the restaurant, and the bars on the more towards the left. Uh, Sesibong, uh, very much liked by Namibians, and I'm quite sure it's something that people would also love to, to experience who come from overseas. Here you can see typically woodwork, kiata uh, wood, and stuff like that. Very nicely done. Um, simple, but nice. Uh, really nice, and like I said, I've stayed there a couple of times. But uh, have a look at the video with that we compiled.
family room but no banana stuff so I am going in so this is two inner beds and then a top of the of the shower inside and bathroom beside it's a big one we need it and this the toilet here there's a bathroom shower And we have four luxury rooms here at Sasebo. Our luxury rooms, there's family and there's troubles. Our western room, the single one with the two single beds inside. This is our toilet beside and the shower beside. Yes, there you can see the uh, address to remember, Cessibon, or otherwise Casa Forno. Um, both of them belonging to the same group, so it's really up to you to decide what you prefer. Um, and uh, obviously, thank you to Enzo Amwele. He was the man who provided those uh, video clips to us and the interview for that matter. Right, that's the end of our destinations today. Up next, we've got to the point. If you're feeling how I'm feeling and you know I won't stop All we gotta do is take our love to the top If I got it and you want it and you'll never let it drop All we gotta do is take our love to the top I will ride for you Baby, even die for you When I'm loving you, but my heart don't stop Yes, to the point. And um, so we all love elephants, don't we? And uh, that is why we keep on reporting about them, telling you what's happening in Namibia, how they're affected, how they survive. Our elephant numbers are, I suppose, satisfactory uh, compared to many other African uh, states, but we need to look after them. Um, so we always talk about these gentle giants, but, but are they really uh, gentle in, in the true sense of the word? I dare say no. Um, I was once warned when I had the privilege of loading elephants uh, on Irindi and uh, one of the vets, uh, vets came over to me and said, Frank, just please be sure that you're far away uh, from their trunks. He reckoned that any chance they get, 
they will grab you and trample you to death. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's a wild animal. We need to understand that we respect it and that we live with it and we, that we preserve it. So why am I telling you this? You will remember I once had an interview with uh, um, people from IRA. IRA obviously standing for Elephant Human Relations Aid. It's an initiative uh, similar to Delta, the Desert uh, Line Human Relations Aid. But in this case, what IRA does is they've got a volunteer program. And um, on their internet site, if you go there, you will see that they describe the, the, the conflict, as they call it, because you've got free-roaming desert elephants in Namibia, and they can be very destructive. Um, and so people need to live with them. But on the other hand, um, if you've got damage on, on account of what's happening all the time, then obviously you start driving them away, killing them, whatever. But quite apart from, from poaching, because this is really about human relation aids. Eight. And um, so, so what they've got, uh, they see their solution as working with the local communities. And that's ERA now. And as part of that uh, work, they've got volunteers. For them, it's a magic time. They can actually attend it. It, it does cost. Um, but you will learn to work with these animals. You will learn to preserve what is uh, up there. You will uh, um, contribute by building uh, uh, proper sites and, and, and uh, They've got all these various dams which they protect and they put up uh, all types of uh, netting and electro wires, electrical wire fencing and, and, and. Early warning systems. So there's a lot to do. So if you want to be part of that, I've just downloaded their promotional video for you. through areas that 99% of the tourists in Namibia don't see. You're going yes. to drive through areas that, that have not changed for the last millions of years and it's beautiful. We've had two days of hardcore wall building. We've just been shoveling sand from this riverbed into the trailer that we're going to use to mix concrete for the wall. We're finding suitable stones uh, to lay on the wall and then cementing in between. So I'm at the moment the small stone person because we put big stones around the sides and then small stones in the middle. Yes, I don't know if I'd ever call myself physically strong, but I'm getting stronger. At the beginning, I thought it's not so. I'm not the right type for doing this. But now, from time to time, you get used to it really fast. So I really think it's something for everyone. So we will wake up at the normal time in the morning, six. Okay. We will have breakfast, six forty-five. People start to wash up. We start to get all the rest of the stuff. I'm going to ask you guys to help a bit with getting wood, digging the fire pit, you know, getting everything out. And we've been sleeping basically outside, you know, maybe there's a tarp over our head, maybe there's nothing, for 12 or 14 days now, and it's a fantastic opportunity. We will park the two cars here against the hill, we'll put the fireplace here. Yes, I'm very much enjoying my second cup of tea. Toast, scrambled egg, and a little bit of cheese. And it's absolutely delicious.
we will head down the river here driving in and out of the river driving in the river all the way will take too long so we'll be driving in and out looking for trucks okay we will teach you about elephant trucks and how to truck them these guys are working with elephants like they're real elephants that are wild and free i've learned so much about tracking animals and everything else it's just you just learned so much. Yeah. You're in a beautiful area. It's not just about the animals, but it's the wildness and pristine of, of Namibia in this part of Namibia. Elephants in their element as like naturally as possible. It's it's their choice to get close to the car, so they are deciding to include ourselves in their space. Well, obviously there's elephants here and there's people here. How can we all coexist peacefully? It's just been a fabulous experience, really. Lots of fun. You get to feel part of a great team. You meet some brilliant people, um, which a lot is been absolutely beyond belief, really. I absolutely loved it. It's not something you could read about. It's something that you really have to see and experience. Yeah, right. Welcome back. Coming back to the video. Um, as you could see, there, it's, it's a magic experience. Most of the footage uh, was obviously taken in the Dumra land. Most of the time you could see the Brandberg in the background. I know because I've been there many times. But the desert elephants, uh, actually one shouldn't talk about desert elephants. They're desert adapted uh, animals, simply the same as desert adapted lions are. Um, they, they don't differ from other uh, elephants or lions. It's simply a case they've adapted to their circumstance. So these elephants, you see them moving right up into Kaukerfeld, up to Puros and beyond. So it's, 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 it's a very nice experience. And uh, if you can afford it, if you've got the time, uh, this is something you should do. It's, it's something that will uh, remain with you for the rest of your lives. The reason why I'm saying that, like I said earlier, I was once involved where they loaded elephants. Actually, it was um, uh, they, they literally re re relocated a, a, a whole family of elephants. And um, it was something that I will never forget in my life. In fact, uh, after the whole operation, I would wake up for a month early in the morning. The first thing that I could think of was those elephants. It was an experience second to none. So I can only imagine what this is if you do that for a whole month or three months. Um, so something to consider. Just look on the internet, EHRA, Elephant Human Relation Aids, as you could see on the movie as well. So anyway, um, then uh, after that, you saw that little insert about the Vintage Express. We are all very excited at Namibia Media Holdings. I said so before, and uh, I think you should become slowly but surely excited as well. Um, we've got this one up two internet channel that we've been doing, and we've got lots of programs uh, like Tourismus, like Klets Compass, the Afrikaans uh, uh, a show that we have. We've got Africa Good Morning. We've got NMH at one as a new show, Africa Good Morning, focusing more on the news in Africa. So um, you should really start making a point. Uh, if you want to be informed about Namibia, go to one up two and uh, you can either look at the shows live or on echo echoes i should say you can go back onto previous shows and look up something that you might have missed so um and we're due to go onto tv one of these days but we'll keep you informed watch uh, watch our allgemeine site and uh, have a look at republican and the movie and sun and so on and you will see that bit by bit we will start introducing you to something really exciting in our papers in terms of television and so on. So um, that brings us to the end of this show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly did, even though I'd seen those videos before. And um, I hope you have a, a beautiful Sunday afternoon still. 
And uh, I wish you well for the coming week. And then we see each other next Sunday. Same time, same place. Until then, remain safe.